Hi everyone, it's Ovi Martinsen here and welcome to this editing session in uh, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, I'm going to show you how I developed this uh, photograph from uh, Dovrefjell in Norway. This is a place I have visited many times over the years and I always see something new when I'm there. So the light is different, the colors are different and uh, I go to different locations. Sometimes I go to the same places, but photograph the same places in different light and in different tones and colors. So let's go to work. Uh, when we upload an image to Adobe Lightroom, a RAW file from the camera, it is a little bit dull in the colors and contrast, so we need to develop it. So what you see here is the negative, like we used to have in the old days. And what I'm going to do now is the development and let's go ahead. So first thing I want to do is to warm up the color temperature. So I go up here to the temperature. So I want to drag it a little bit to the right. So we get the warmer tones in the autumn colors here. Make a little bit more. Um, yeah, around here, a little bit more, there. Now we have warmer tones here, and uh, I want to increase the contrast, so I drag it up to around 28. So when I increase the contrast, you can also see I have more dark areas. I want to lift the dark areas and then I can use the shadow tool so I drag the shadow tool to the right and uh, end up around here I think you see here the difference don't do it, overdo it and don't underdo it but find the balance and um, how much you use is different from picture to picture because no scene is the same and what is also important is your expression how do you want your image to appear and there are no truths here so it's up to you so I have lifted the shadows so I want also to take down the whites a little bit because we have some white areas here so I drag it down and then I can press the option button you see the white areas here now it's the and I drag it down to the left if I re I can't remove all of it because it's too highlighted but I want it around here and I also want to take the highlights down Let's see what happens Take it, see what happens here. Take down the highlights, the colors pop in. So I think we can go around 35, minus 35 here on the highlights. And also want to take in the blacks. You can see here in the histogram, the black tones are in the left part here of the histogram just want to have a little bit more so I drag it to the left to minus two not not more you can see when I move this the histogram up here it moves to you see the black black tones are moving so I want it down to minus two like this and Let's go for, for the clarity here. That um, slider, it sharpens or softens the medium tones in the image. So I want to sharpen the medium tones so then uh, I get a more crispy image. Drag it to the right. Yeah, around 25 is fine. On the clarity, plus 25. And now we go to the Vibrance tool and I drag it up to around 45 
and the vibrance tool boost up the colors that are not so present from before so you get more vibrant colors and also want some saturation don't overdo the saturation don't do it like this or like this but I want a little bit more and now we are closer to how I remember that uh, sunrise in the beautiful autumn colors at Dovre Fjell in Norway so let's move down and here in the HSL section I also want to work on the saturation on the different colors so we have HSL it stands for U saturation and luminance so we can adjust the U which is the tone of each color each color has different tones and uh, we can adjust the saturation within with each color and also the luminance so for example I can darken the red or light up the red but I'll leave it at zero here in the luminance and we go back to the saturation I want just to leave it up on the red don't overdo it don't do it like this just a little bit and I think I end up around seven here a little bit up on the orange because we have many orange tones here colors there we go plus 10 on the orange a little bit up on the yellow you can do the same there up to 10 and a little bit up on the green we have the green here so a little bit up not much it's fine we have a much better image already and uh, we can sharpen the image that's under the detail section and I go to the sharpening and I drag it up to normally around plus 58 and the radius I use 1.1 and I want to use the masking tool and the masking tool is to uh, the areas for the masking is areas which will not be sharpened so I press down the option button on the keyboard and drag the slider and you can see now the dark field the dark areas will not be sharpened so around 40 is okay And I want to go down to the lens correction section and I go here and I check the enable profile corrections. I also want to remove the chromatic aberration. I check this box. The chromatic aberration is the lines between, for example, the horizon here and the sky. It can be color lines along the reaches here. So when I tick this box it will remove these color lines and the profile correction is for the lens I used which was a size 18 millimeter wide angle lens and um, then I go to the profile and I want to keep the vignette the vignette in the lens each lens has different vignettes and it will be removed when you tick the box but I want to keep that so now we are keep the viewer inside the frame because it's a little bit darker at the edges of the frame if I want more vignette I can go down here to effects and drag the slider to the left or to the right if I want you just a little bit more and I keep the viewer inside the frame and I also want to increase the contrast in the colors a little bit so I can actually just I can use the brush 
and I can paint over here. I can, you see the ring here? I can adjust the ring by scrolling on the mouse or I can adjust the size of the ring here with these two. And we can do all these adjustments you see here. In the area I paint. So I move the I paint over, over the green areas here. Just to increase the contrast a little bit. A little bit here. Because now it's a little bit lighter. Here's too much you see. But just want to add a little bit lighter tones on the green here. 0 0.13, that's enough. Then I close it. And let's check here. We have some dust up here. I want to remove the dust. So I go up here on the spot removing tool. Click on it. Go over here. Here I can also adjust the ring. How big it is. It's depending on the size of the dust. I click just over the dust and it will be removed. So what happens is that uh, the program, it uh, removes the dust by taking an area with the same tones and colors and put it over the dust. So it's a very intelligent tool. Let's say I Click on this dust, but I'm not happy with the selection the computer did for me or the program did. I can take the, the ring here and put it in another spot that maybe will cover the dust better. So, but it was not so bad. And one up here, and a couple of here. You will always get dust on your lens or sensor when you work out in the field and you change lenses in different weather conditions. <coughs> so, but sometimes you have to clean the sensor. I normally go to the photo store where they have special in instruments to clean the sensor. Uh, my lenses, I clean them myself. I'm using the um, size lens cleaning kit, which is very good. There we go. We close the menu there. And now let's see the image in full frame. Now it's developed. And how do I see it in full frame? I just press the F button on the computer. And let's see. Here we have it. Not so bad. Not so bad. Press the F button one more time and I go back. So this was a short video and um, just one example on how you can do it. So there are many ways and there are no real truths. If it's up to you and your artistic expression how we want to do it so i see you in the next video and thank you for watching